Ardra Shepard, and this is Tripping On Air, a place to talk shit about what it's like to have MS. Normally, I like to make everything about me, but MS also affects the people we love. So weighing in from the partner perspective is Alex Hajar, my friend whose wife also has MS. Join us monthly as we dish about everything from symptoms to stigma. If you have MS or you love someone who does, we want to connect with you. When it comes to managing MS, there are a number of life hacks that we are sometimes left to figure out on our own. My personal entry into the world of mobility aids was confusing, intimidating, and sometimes overwhelming to the point of tears. Today we're gonna talk about practical things like how do I know I need a mobility aid? What kind of mobility aid do I need? Where do I get a mobility aid? And who the heck is even gonna pay for this mobility aid? Plus, we're gonna talk to role leader queen Suzanne Drouet from Prairie Vélo about some very cool adaptive sports equipment as well as her role in creating a more positive customer experience for people with MS and all kinds of disabilities that might benefit from using a mobility aid. But first, I want to talk about one of the less obvious obstacles to getting a mobility aid into your life, and that is navigating the stigma, the doubt, the grief, and the fear that comes with graduating to a new level of disability. All of the crap that gets in our heads and makes this process harder than it needs to be. And it totally is harder than it needs to be, at least now. Uh, but I think it's getting easier. It's such a critical topic. Um, you know, Nicole's been using mobility aids for a handful of years now. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, it was kind of a nightmare for me. And I'm still on a giant learning curve. Alex, what do you remember about your feelings when Nicole first needed mobility aids? Well, I think I've said before, or maybe not, my aunt has had MS for a number of years since the eighties, I think. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm not, I don't want to say I recognized any signs because I don't think I did, but I think that, you know, as the, as drop foot became more prominent, uh, and maybe literally tripping, uh, became a more consistent event. Uh, that's when I started to think, you know, maybe it is time because my aunt uses one. So she was kind of my you know, canary in the coal mine again, um, to, to get one, to get one for Nicole, actually. So I actually went out first and got one for Nicole. I got her a hiking pole. You did. Like, did she know you were doing that? Or were you just like, hey, honey, I got your present. I can't remember. I think I just came home and said, here, use this now. Oh, um, and maybe it was a bit too blunt, but that's kind of my how did, modus operandi. How did she receive that? Was it like a I big think, deal or was she just like, cool? I think in part, she may have, you know, um, known that it was time and just didn't want to acknowledge it because of the stigma and the fear that comes along with it. And you can see it, whether it's traveling in foreign countries where disability is almost non-existent in some places, and people stare. And people stare here, too, because seeing a young person with mobility aid is not you know, a socially normalized thing. My experience was, was different. I mean, everyone's experience is different, mm. but I was really worried about what other people and especially my husband was going to think. I mean, our dynamic is that I make all of my own decisions and I'm not super receptive to suggestions, mm. but like about anything, right. <laughs> but I feel like when it comes to, you know, dipping my toe into mobility aids, I felt like I really needed the people in my life to cheerlead me on that in a way that, um, yeah, I'm, I just, I really needed, I kind of felt like I needed someone to say, like, I'm proud of you for doing this instead of maybe having a more neutral response. Uh, when many of us are diagnosed, it is very popular thing for doctors and professionals to say, you know, don't worry, not everyone with MS ends up in a wheelchair. And I hate this sentence because 
Um, I don't think it makes anything less scary. If, if anything, it stigmatizes mobility aids and makes it sound like that's the end. But nobody's of your saying, life you know, or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Like yeah. nobody's saying not everyone will have trouble walking. Here's like we hope it doesn't. Hope is cheap. Of course. Yeah. Here's what we can do if it does, because when we don't position it like that, it can feel like you are the outlier, like you failed at having MS. And like that becomes this other barrier to ex like starting to use mobility. It's, it's definitely you are in this gray area for a time when using a mobility aid is a choice. It might be a choice that makes you less safe or safer, depending on which way you go. But, you know, it's not as black and white as, as some injuries that like might necessitate. And of course in MS that can happen too. It can be very black and white, but for many, when you're tr transitioning from relapsing remitting to secondary progressive, it, it really does become something you have to choose. Yeah. I think, I don't know. It, it, it's, we're talking about the fear and the stigma, and I think that's a very real thing. And, um, yeah, it's tough. I, I mean, I, I think it's fair. If someone were to ask me, you know, what would you say to friends and partners who maybe hesitate to see their loved ones using a mobility aid? Because I think you can see it sometimes in people's faces where they're like, they see you and they cringe or they, they have this look of pity on their face. And you know what? Get over it because... Uh, you know, this is this is the new person and this is how they're getting around, you know, and those are, you know, there's mobility aids from, you know, from canes and and uh, AFOs and and wheel and wheelchairs. They're like superpowers, you know, when you get out there and they, they give you the power of the they give you that independence and they give partners that independence, too. Um, for me, I feel like it like that is the case. Well, I think that there is a learning curve, right? So if you are lucky to have friends and family and even doctors who are supportive of you using a mobility aid, that's awesome. But not everyone does. And sometimes people are even applauded for, you know, not giving up and not using like a literal crutch. And I, that can be like really, really, damaging. And so again, I worried a lot about what my partner, how they would feel being seen. It sounds so silly now. You, Alex, you've been through it as the partner. And so, you know, what I'm hearing you say is also what has been my experience is that it is a positive thing for both people or for the whole family, whoever's involved, because you do get to spend more time with your person, like out doing stuff instead of, you know, just like chilling at home. And I've seen people literally dragging their people around, you know, uh, and, and I think that's, I think that's way worse. Like to watch two people struggle when neither have to be struggling, uh, when it's something as simple as a, a cane could be used to just move about. Um, I think that's the most encouraging thing to see, in my opinion. And and when like, yeah, I think because it's a dependent, it's sort of a dependent relationship, obviously. But at the same time, like you don't have to be as dependent uh, with these items. So it's great. It's like so... It seems so obvious. It's so weird what we've done to stigmatize these devices. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, uh, I don't know. They're, they're, they're pretty simple. They're in fundamentally simple items, but they're so critical to people's, um, uh, just going to the store, it makes it a lot easier. You might not even need your partner most of the time if you're just using one of these, one a, a mobility aid, right? Whether it's a cane and a and a, a brace, like that's what Nicole used when we were in Vietnam. It was a, a cane and a brace, and it. I think you've said it before. Obviously, is uh, different aids for different days. Yeah, yeah. Right? I want to get into that. I, so, really, I think. My understanding when I was first diagnosed was, you know, you like hopefully won't need a wheelchair. 
I always thought that if you needed a wheelchair, that meant you were a full-time wheelchair user. And that's not the case at all. And I found, I found, I find I'm garbling my words, listen, because I'm so passionate about this. Once I understood that I could use different mobility aids throughout the day or throughout my life, like that made a big difference for me knowing that, you know, it, it, it's not black and white. It's not night and day. But I will say it can be very difficult to determine exactly when it is time to start using mobility aids. In my experience and the experience of people I've talked to, it's not always a doctor that's going to suggest this for you. And also, we don't tend to see our neurologists all that often when things are changing and fatigue is so variable. I remember about 10 or 12 years ago, I had just moved into this building and I had a neighbor down the hall. She was a new mom and she had a screaming baby. She was losing her mind. She barely knew me, but I think she was just at her wits end. And she begged me, she was like, can you please just take this kid for a walk? Like I'm, I'm going to, I'm losing my shit. Uh, and so I was like, okay, uh, she trusted me. And the, the kid was in a stroller and I took him for a walk and I ha- like discovered this energy, this ease of movement from pushing the stroller. It was, I went on this, the, my walk was so long that I feel like she was close to calling 911. Like, where are you? What have you done with my kid? I was gone for so long. Right. Okay. This is not a good reason to have a baby. Um, Did you take, give the baby back and just take the stroller home with you? Right. I feel like I would have looked crazy pushing an empty stroller. Maybe I could have gotten away with like pushing one of those fancy dogs, you know, um, I live in the city, Um, but I didn't, but you know, and then I would notice too at the grocery store, like pushing the cart, how much easier like how much longer I could go okay yeah um yeah. so those were like flags for me to notice that wow these are things that increase my stamina I didn't but I mean I didn't process that into like oh wow I should get a roll later I still waited like five or six years of like sitting on a curb because I didn't I ran out of steam and went past the point of no return and, you know, couldn't make it home. Yeah. And I think that's part of the confusion that comes with when to get one. And I've always heard, you know, it's if you think you need one, if you're at the point that you think you need one, you're actually way past the point and you probably need more than one, uh, more than one type of one or something like that. Um, And it doesn't mean you need it all the time, but you need it, you know, if you're going to get the mail, but not if you're getting up to bed to make coffee or something like that. So there's different areas to look at. And, and, you know, to that point where you're saying you could walk a lot more and, and, you know, from my perspective, um, I think, or, or for me, I should say, I guess, uh, when Nicole started using a mobility aid and I've said, you know, I typically would, I, I re, what is it? I orbit around Nicole. I would orbit around Nicole, but when she's using the mobility aid, I don't feel my orbit is I can kind of go a little bit further and, and that's just my own personal paranoia. But you know, I, I think those, whatever age she's using, she knows exactly what she needs for that time and that purpose. And then I can, you know, I can step back and, and, you know, she has, this sounds terrible because I feel like I'm, I'm always hovering, I'm saying, but I'm not, uh, you know, she goes out all the time, does her own thing. And I, I have the peace of mind that she's going to be stable and not fall down and get hurt or something like that. And I think that's something constantly that I have a challenge with, but these mobility aids definitely allow me to, uh, maybe just lower my shoulders and, like, and breathe. Yeah. 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 I will say, though, you know, you think MS sucks, but then you fall and break something and it sucks a hell of a lot worse. So it is important to be safe. That said, listen, there's no guidebook on how to hack any of this stuff. I struggled. And so I'm excited to to do this episode because I do want to talk about what is what our options are. And I like you mentioned canes. Canes, I think, are the most obvious first sort of thing that we might first device that we might consider 
But I would also urge you to consider something like trekking poles, which look a little bit sportier if that's your jam, but also provide bilateral support. So canes actually can be a bit of a challenge depending on where your weakness is or where your drop foot is. Um, forearm crutches that you can also use on both arms bilaterally are also a good option. I want to give a shout out to the third foot cane, um, which is by Aligned by Design, because you can get at the pharmacy or whatever a claw foot attachment to your cane that can feel more stable. But the third foot cane is it's got a rubber foot. It doesn't have any toes, but it moves like a foot so that when you walk, it it helps you move in a more natural gait. That's the cane that I use at home. Again, you can have two and use them bilaterally. I like to have my hands free to carry, you know, a glass of wine or um, mm -hmm. coffee or whatever at the same the, point. The, so Nicole uses a collapsible cane, which is great because uh, in the summertime when we're using the motorcycle, we can collapse it and throw it in the under the seat and go and so it, you know there's no worry of ever uh you know not being able to store it um and the hiking pool so the hiking pool i just wanted to bump in about that because that was the first thing that i did get nicole the thing was or that's the first thing i came home with um and it's good it has i think a bit of give as well like it's some of them are spring loaded uh if that helps but they are they do tend to be quite narrow at the bottom so uh and some of them actually have like a little metal uh piece in the middle of the the foot let's call it at the bottom so um maybe it's for special rock climbing abilities but at the same time i don't know if that might be something so i would just say just test it out i think you really do test it out absolutely they're not that expensive but also mm, that's true. i think that trekking poles are more helpful for like balance and stamina, not so much for drop foot. So, you know, it depends and you can have more than one thing going on at, at the time. In fact, you can use more than one mobility aid at the time. At, and I think AFOs, which you mentioned are really important to know about. So that's an ankle foot orthosis. And there are many, many variations of these, my first AFO was customized. It had a fleur de lis on it. I, you know what? It was, it was sort of my first entry point into mobility aids. I was doing an opera training program in Edmonton, and I was about to meet 40 new people that I'd never met before. And this was when I was in like the invisible illness stage of MS. And, you know, it's hard to meet 40 new people and feel like you have to communicate some fatigue needs and ugh, all of it. Right. And so the AFO was kind of a light bulb for me in that situation, because yes, mobility aids can make us feel like all eyes are on us and stigmatized and whatever else. In this case, I felt like it communicated something that for me that I didn't have to sort of spell out over and over again. It was like to these 40 new people, it was like, I might need a little extra, whatever, if that makes sense. Was it a rigid item or was it like, cause there's the dictus band, which I'm sure we're going to yeah. get to, but that's more, um, elastic, I guess maybe it's not the best word, but it's more flexible where, or did you have like one of the rigid ones? Cause yeah, uh, so you know, if, an AFO, an ankle foot orthos orthosis, AFO, mm -hmm. can help you if you have drop foot. So drop foot is, you know, when you're walking and your foot, you're having trouble picking it up off the ground, right? Um, this is a device that can basically keep your foot ankle up. I suck at these medical descriptions. This is why they don't let lay people give medical advice. <laughs> you need to see, you need a doctor, you need a prescription. These are custom medical devices. There will be some mm -hmm. insurance coverage for them if you have private insurance. But there are also non-prescription hacks Alex mentioned the Dictus band. I really love this. You can get it on Amazon. You don't need a prescription. It's cheap. 
it is uh, a piece of leather that wraps around your ankle and then attaches to the eyelets of your shoe to pull your foot up. And that was like, um, like a hallelujah moment when I found that because it made such a difference and, um, like such a quick, easy fix. I can wear it with my rollator. There's even, a a shoeless attachment that you can wear at home. These are like, I was like, when I discovered that, I was like, why didn't someone tell me about this five years ago? It's, it's the, it's not out there that much, you know, it's very difficult. Yeah. It's, it's a huge learning yeah. curve. I keep, we keep saying it, but it's true. It's huge. Yeah. They're just, uh, you know, it's coming up now more, I guess, but, uh, even, you know, when we started looking at it, there's not much there to look at. Well, and I think once you do decide that you are ready for a walker, which we now call rollator, that's an overwhelming world also. And like, where do you start? You can go to a medical supply store. I went to one and did not have a good experience, first of all. They're, the store that I went to, they told me th that they weren't allowed to give me any advice, which was very frustrating. Like, you get it that you're not a doctor, but I need you to at least tell me how some of this stuff works. Aren't they supposed to sell this stuff to you? Uh, like, uh, right. So <laughs> a walker, a rollator is something that can help you with balance, gait, fatigue, endurance, all of that. It can give you a place to sit whenever you need it and it can help you carry your stuff they've come a long long way my tips like right back to canes i think you can personalize and i think you should pick something that matches your style i think there are so many canes now it truly is like eyeglasses like there's no reason not to find something that matches your style rollators are are going that route as well. And I think the things to look for in terms of style and function, you want something that's lightweight. You can get carbon fiber, which is the lightest, but there are lighter models also. There are a number of colors you can choose from. For me, hidden cables is what makes something look um, great also you lightweight you want to make sure it fits in your car and even that you can lift it because that's a part of endurance too right um or uh, independence like just being able to cart your own device around on your own yeah yeah absolutely and to be honest like it's kind of um apt maybe that we're having this conversation today because I saw somebody I think yesterday or the day before um in another building in the complex that I live and she was walking with like you know you know a walker not I know it's a called a rollator now but this is like the traditional old school like no wheels walker outside so yeah that is a walker okay. it doesn't have wheels it's like you take a step so, and yeah i don't know why they honestly it was i felt so terrible before, you know the, and there's the stick maybe that's part of the stigma but i was like i know there's better stuff out there for you um <sighs> i didn't you know i didn't stop and talk to her i was just like i i'm i hope you don't have to deal with that thing for very long because it is terrible <laughs> well i think this is what's frustrating is that your neurologist is not going to be an expert on what's out there. They will send you to an occupational therapist, an OT, or a physical therapist, a PT, who will be able to guide you on what you need and help you with the financing process. If you live in Canada, there is funding for these devices. But even the OTs and the PTs, they don't know everything that's out there and so they may just have one model that they recommend to most people and it it is the part where you really do have to advocate for yourself and do some homework and and find the product that is the best for you when i went to that first medical supply store i discovered that there is a product a, a rollator that converts to a transport chair, and I say transport chair, not wheelchair, because a wheelchair you can 
self propel yourself, like a transport chair, you need a buddy, you need somebody who's going to be able to push the device for you. But th it blew my mind that this kind of product existed because like how brilliant and how, um, it, it, it so well articulates that, um, there is a variability throughout the day of our energy and fatigue levels. So you may be able to walk for so long and then you benefit from getting a push. And this actually having a device like this keeps you active longer because otherwise you might just opt to use a transport chair or a wheelchair for your entire outing and not walk at all. And it's just super convenient. Like it, it's super convenient. we went to, we went to a wedding once and it was in uh, a fr you know, a relative's backyard and their backyard was on a grade and it was grass everywhere. So, but, but this device that we use, we use a rolls. Okay. Hashtag not sponsored, but like we use a rolls, uh, motion and the chair just exists. There's no need to look for a chair. You just literally make like three movements and you boom, you've got a, a, a seat for yourself now. So, and Okay, it does sound super easy, and it is easy, but the first time I went to that medical supply store, I was presented with a clunky, bulky um, rollator that converted to a transport chair. It mm. was ugly. I hated it, but I thought, <laughs> okay, this is this is what I have to get, um, and it, it was compared to the rolls, but... The, the person in the store didn't know how to convert the device. And so when I was testing it, I put all of my weight on it, and but the handlebars were in the inappropriate place and it tipped over. And I was like, this is a stupid device. I can't possibly use this. So I bought the clunky, cheaper, uglier version. And it was a hard day. Um, got out to the car it wouldn't fit in the trunk oh the and worst that's the, the worst best it changed my life because like at the moment i was like crying and upset and just like you know just like i'm just never going anywhere i'm just gonna stay home because the world doesn't want me out there obviously right. i was like <laughs> feeling so affronted i so i returned it and went home and then went online and and took another look at the rolls and and saw online how to properly convert it went back to the store figured it out and bought it um so just you know that's all just to reiterate like how much we are left to fend for ourselves sometimes and it really sucks but i just feel like i um I want to tell people that things are getting better and there are, are some answers. Yeah, they are. You know? They are getting better because I think like it's it's just easier to find this stuff. And, and now algorithms are shooting, you know, very uh, comprehensive ads at you about this stuff. If you even say transport share or rollator, then I'm sure I'm going to once we finish here, probably have a bunch of ads for rollators on my phone. But I, you know what? Maybe. But it's <laughs> shocking. I have. It's, it's still not easy. <laughs> But, it's sorry. shocking to me how many uh, doctors at how many doctors appointments for whatever like doesn't have to be I was at the the ear nose and throat guy last week and there were three or four people with rollators in the waiting room and they were all like oh my god I love your rollator like they'd never seen anything like it before so it's still I there is like an awareness hole and I think this is actually a really good time to introduce Suzanne Drouet to the show. Suzanne and her husband, Brian, are a dream team who help a lot of trippers figure out which mobility aid might be right for them. Suzanne, welcome to the show. Can you tell us about your shop, Prairie Velo, and how did you and your husband get into this line of work? Well, we, it's a long story, but the short of it is that my husband, uh, avid cyclist his whole life, he uh, was a competitor. He used to race in Europe. Uh, so he's been around bikes forever. Uh, didn't choose to work in that industry, but it was always a dream of his to have like his bike shop. But what's interesting is that 
throughout all, all any trip that we would take had to have a cycling component to it. He had to be able to go out and ride. Uh, and, and myself too, I, I couldn't keep up to him, right? So this was the beginning of like, you know, couples want to go out and ride and have fun together, but there's always one person for whatever reason that can't keep up. Uh, you know, either they don't have the physical fitness for it uh, or have a bum knee and have a sore back and their hands get numb and you know how the progression for us of thinking about how many people would like to ride but don't because um because because of all sorts of reasons women were telling us particularly uh that when they would go into a bike shop they felt um it was demoralizing for them they would walk into a bike shop and the you know the young guys would look them up and down and go you want to ride a bike <laughs> um, okay we'll see if we can find something for you and uh and, and and so, you know, we started talking about e-assist. You know, we know that e-bikes are the big, all the rage right now. And for a reason, a lot of people stopped riding because they just can't. They just, it's it's too much for them. Riding a bike is not all that easy. And so... Um, it, sorry, in Toronto, in Toronto, we don't ride bikes if, because we don't want to get killed by the car. <laughs> yeah. They do a little <laughs> yeah. bit. Uh, but yeah, you have to yeah. be careful with an e-bike. They go fast. They can go really fast. Yeah, they're, they're quite yeah, right. but but um, the idea again that people were telling us, parents were saying, I just want to be able to go out with my kids. I want to go out with my grandkids. I want to be able to keep up with my spouse and my friends. I want to keep up with the group. I don't want to be the Debbie Downer who's always sitting it out and 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 so then we the e assist kind of brought us to tricycles, either uh, just regular tricycles or e assist tricycles, and there was a stigma, right? A tricycle is for a kid, it's for a toddler, uh, but boy, has that you know engineering come a long way. So suddenly people were saying, oh, because I I can't ride a bike because I don't have the balance, I don't have the stability, uh, I had a, a brain injury, I I used to be super active but I can't do that anymore. Um, but a tricycle? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. And so they would come into our shop and they would see tricycles and, you know, the wheels started to turn. A lot of people who were looking at the tricycles also had other issues maybe where, yeah, they were using a cane, uh, using uh, a, a walker, um, rollator, and just weren't aware of the possibilities, the things that could help them move. And so the rollators became a big part of our of our, our bike shop. It's kind of you think, what's a bike shop doing with rollators? But, you know, rollators have uh, bike cables <laughs> for the brakes, uh, the wheels and the axles. And to bring our b cycling expertise to these mobility aids, was just like a no brainer. Uh, people are so happy when we help them fix things that are really actually really simple. They think they have to buy a new rollator and we go, no, we'll just look at that, tighten up the, the cables or we'll just change your cables and, and voila, you'll have a, a new uh, rollator. But I've been listening to you and I've been seeing to what extent people just don't know what is out there. And I think that's what we bring, you know, to the table. You've got, yes, this sporting, adoptive sporting goods store that also sells mobility aids. How do you curate what goes into your shop? Um, <clears throat> that has been evolving from day one that has evolved. Uh, I mean, we sell what we call now acoustic bikes, <laughs> non-electric bikes. The electric bikes, for example, you know what we used to call the girl bikes where, you know, the, the bar is lower so you can get in easier. That's really important, not just for women now. Uh, we call them step-throughs and men like that too as they get older, you know, the hips trying to <clears throat> get the hip over the, over the seat. Uh, we're getting more comfortable seats. People don't realize that change the seat, your bum is going to feel a lot better. Uh, you might not feel as much pain or as much tension here and there. Um, and I think just the openness you were talking about, Ardra, how you go into a shop and they don't know how to, how to even set it up to help you out at the beginning. Um, my husband, Brian, I mean, he's the expert in making sure that the fit is right on a bicycle. And it's all the same thing when you're in a, on a rollator. It's got to feel right. It's got to fit your body. And uh, I think, and, and the other thing too is people walk into a bike shop 
and it's just so cool. <laughs> and we have a cool kind of cool store and people just feel normal walking into a bike shop and being there along, you know, the kid who's buying his little, uh, his first uh, two wheel, uh, his first two wheeler and seeing people who are uh, maybe older, the, the demographics are a little older people looking at e-bikes and then there's the tricycles and then there's the cargo bikes. It just feels nice to be in a store that, you know, it's just about people moving. It's just about people, um, I don't know if it's cliche, but this idea that having the wind in your hair, boy, that feels good. And it brings you back to your childhood. You know, that independence, the first time you could go on your bicycle and go to grandma's or go around the... So it's that experience is just... And they tell us, they tell us how much they appreciate that. Well, I mean, I look at your site online, Suzanne, and it does look like everything in your shop is cool. Is, th is there an intent to that? Like what, how do you choose what, what goes in your shop? It's gotta be cool, but it's gotta work. It's form and function. If it doesn't do the job, what, you know, it's not enough that it looked pretty. Um, and I think we, we, you know, again, without naming brands, we have uh, brands that are sexy. I often tell, we do a lot of online. I spend a lot of time on the phone uh, talking about uh, our products and um, it's got to look sexy. I, I, you were talking about this transition when you, ex when you come to the point where you have to accept that even the cane isn't doing the job anymore. You need a rollator. It's a hard decision to make. I spend a lot of time on the phone with people who, uh, you know, it's like, here I, here I am. I, I need a rollator. But man, if I'm going to have a rollator, it better look good. I don't want to look like, you know, everyone has this image of their grandmother and their great grandmother hunched over the rollator. But when you can explain to them. I, I like I hear this all the time and I feel like the grannies need better shit, too. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Like, I, my grandmother liked to look cool. And uh, yeah. I think like, there's depends no, how old you are, you know, those older they, generations of rollators, you were talking about walkers, you know, where you have to lift it. <laughs> uh, so those are the images that people have. And when you talk about something that, first of all, is the aesthetics, the lines are really nice, the maneuverability, uh, colors, it's like choosing a pair of shoes. You're not going to wear just any color of shoes. Oh, you don't have to tell me. Like, I just, uh, I... I ordered a new, I got a new phone and the wrong case came and I like, I was like, I, I don't want to be seen with this. Like I had to wait like two days now to get the right case. And in the meantime, like, I don't want to be seen with this electric blue, like, ugh. you know, one thing I hear a lot is that some of the newer, cooler, sexier devices are more expensive yeah. and it's true, but I want to bring some attention to there is funding for all of these devices across Canada. And some of the devices that weren't maybe recognized a few years ago are now being recognized. And uh, is yes. that true, Suzanne? Are you seeing more of that? Yes. Yeah. So I think, and you want to check with your private insurance to see the yeah. top up, but don't assume that uh, you're not going to get pretty good mm -hmm. coverage. I've had people where I've said uh, a long discussion about, you know, what's the best rollator for me? Is it, is it, you know, is the seat 20 inches from the ground? Is it 24 inches from the ground? How wide? My hips are a little wide. It might be a little snug. You know, those are difficult conversations, right? When you have to say like, how tall are you? Now, your bum. <laughs> Do you have a big bum or a small bum? And so we laugh a lot about those things, but it's true. They have to fit in these walkers. And then some of the people, by the end of the conversation, I say, and you have insurance? Do you think insurance could cover that for you? And they go, oh, I hadn't thought of that. They hadn't thought that there would be insurance that could help with the purchase of a mobility aid like that. So that's all I always hear like in their voice, like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. This is great. Yeah, the money thing. I, I always say this is part of the household transportation budget. We're a one car household and I don't drive. And so, you know what? These things are not luxury items. They are not nice to have. So you need to have them. I have two questions. One of them is what are maybe some, uh, elementary things that either a person looking for a mobility aid should functionally be 
looking for, uh, or or a person, or like a you know, uh, who, or their partner, um, if if they're going in and they're looking for mobility, what what kind of questions do they want to ask? And the other question I have is. How did you get the nickname Rollator Queen? <laughs> well, that's my husband. <laughs> He's oh, right. everything. <laughs> He's kind of like that. But you know what? <laughs> he, he threw that out because the minute he we get a call at the shop for for that, uh, he immediately sends them to me because uh, he knows the product r- well. Um, I think he's probably better w- and, at fitting people. But most of our co- of our customers are all over the country. I mean, um, they're all over the country. We don't even have all that many people in Manitoba, actually, that come to see us. Um, So you really have to spend a lot of time on the phone explaining things. And it's not a five-minute conversation. You know, they start telling you about their story, about their life, about, you know, where they're at. And you have to be the queen. It's it's not a good term to call me. But the queen kind of sounds like hoity-toity, but it's not. I... I spend a lot of time, and um, and I love that. That's a, that's what I like the most: asking questions. I love that you are so passionate about this, Suzanne, because this can be a really tough time for people. And it's nice to have like a friendly, knowledgeable voice that can help guide us through this. Well, the beginning of a conversation starts here, and as it goes, as it progresses, I can hear the anxiety level just. Whew, and the stress level just kind of going away. And by the end, um, sometimes they're confused because they have too many options. But, um, and I have to remind people, I had a long conversation with someone yesterday who is traveling. But she's not just traveling in her life. She also has the day-to-day. And so we had, she says, well, what, what do you think I need? And we had to think really about, okay, what's the most Put, setting the traveling aside, think of your needs today. Don't worry about what's coming up. You have, a, you have a, an issue now and you want to get the best product for yourself now. Um, and sometimes it means having more than one, right? Roll later. You're going to Europe. You're going to be in a plane. Uh, you're going to be on cobblestone and you're going to have a lot of vibration. Uh, is there maybe a roll later that has pneumatic tires that might help with you, with that? Um, and that will also be, also be good when you come back home and you want to go, I don't know, on a bike, on a bike path or, a, you know, on the beach or <laughs> something like that. So you really have to show them the options. And you were saying, Ardra, how, it, that is not obvious. You have to start doing your own research to find out what's out there. You're not going to see that in the medical stores. Um, um, yeah, you you need help knowing what's out there. And you were speaking about, you know, a, a rollator transport chair. I mean, how cool is that? It's so the cool. that you can do that. Yeah. And so, Suzanne, I like, yes, there's some cool stuff out there, but is there any cool stuff coming? Like, what do we have to look forward to in this space? Well, that's what's really exciting about the cycling industry, just as in the mobility industry, is that the e-assist, the electric assist, meaning for example that you have one of these rollator transport chairs um, having an electric assist that allows the people who are pushing you to have a little bit that makes it a little easier for them to get over the little bumps in the hills so imagine an e-assist for the person pushing and a joystick that you can add you know to so that you can self-propel so that you can control your 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 chair that is that is the dream like to yeah. have something where i can use it as a rollator yeah. get a push when i need to mm-hmm. and then you know motorize hand control when i need to especially i really i need museum autonomy when we go to a museum it's slow walking it's exhausting especially when we travel we love to do it but my husband he needs to spend so much time at every painting. And I just like, I need the autonomy. I need to be able to be like, I need to do it on my own. So that is super exciting. I can't wait for, for that to come. I, I've heard this rumor, I think later it's the this I year. Rumor, right? it's, it's a rumor. Yeah. But the other one that, I, that is available, and we're, we're still, uh, we have to have it um, approved for, for, for Canada, is... Um, a walker for people with neurological diseases um, 
that helps them walk by giving them visual cues. And this is the Parkinson's relator, right? This is the Parkinson's. So cool. And so it gives you visual cues and tactile cues. So for example, you'll have kind of a, a metronome vibration in your hands to, to kind of give you, to help you with your gait, to keep the rhythm and to keep you moving forward. And visual cues where you would have um, kind of like a, a line that appears, one of those whatever lights that that appears on so that you can keep your line straight um that's that's really that's cool so stuff cool go science yeah, because it's go science exactly uh, it actually uh, it's it's the idea too of the whole e-assist the batteries the electric the electric batteries that allow us to do those things now um so yeah i think the parkinson um device is going to be Excellent. I know I've had OTs and physiotherapists who are like, boy, I can think of a lot of people who would really benefit from that. Totally. Um, yeah. So it, it's going in the right direction. Um, a lot of these products are European products. Uh, even with my, my husband, we're always saying how even for the trikes and, and the recumbents and Europe always seems to be like 10 miles ahead of us in terms of that. But we're bringing them in because people want you know, they want the best that they can get. And uh, like you said, if it's money that you can spend on that instead of a car and car insurance and all of that, you know, you've got to take care of yourself and your needs. I mean, I like also, Suzanne, we've talked about the need to have mobility aids. I am definitely more of an indoor girl, but I'm like starting to get a bit adoptive sports curious. You mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned the trikes, the bikes. Are, are there any other um, adoptive sporting equipment that you can, can tell me about to help maybe tempt me into this space? Well, we're, we're, um, this would not be for someone with MS, uh, but we're developing our own line of, of hand bikes. So, uh, hand bikes can also be for all sorts of disabilities, um, mostly paraplegics who, who don't have use of their, of their, uh, their legs. Um, and we're, we're really, really, really excited about that because it's kind of like an untapped market, uh, thinking of, using the parts of the body that do work well, you know? Yeah, no, and that's so cool. And I love that. I think I'm guessing that why your hesitation to recommend that for MS is the fatigability, right? Well, this is hard. Yeah. This motion is hard. Uh, you have to have core, good core. Uh, you have to have a good upper body. But again, oh, you can yeah. learn and, and get I was born without abs. It's... <laughs> Well, again, I think coming back to the tricycles and the, the recumbents and, you know, there's walking bikes too. Uh, a lot of people want to be able to move their lateral, uh, do some lateral movement. So they have the walking bikes where they're walking, but they're sitting on something that looks like a bike without pedals. Uh, so there's also things like that. So it just keeps you working. Just like we have uh, um, a neurologist, actually, who's retired and, uh, with Parkinson. And he, uh, you know, he, he's worked in that environment forever. And here he is with Parkinson. He's been on, using um, uh, a scooter, just, you know, one of those scooters that you do. And he says... Uh, he says that if you use both sides, you're really working the, uh, both sides of your body. And that's really important for people with Parkinson is that they keep both sides of the body working and the brain working as well, right? The re right, left, right, left. And so there's all sorts of reasons to use um, these tools or these mobility aids or not aids i mean scooters anyone can use a scooter but the idea that you can keep your body in shape and keep it in shape as long as you can you know what 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 does work well what you're comfortable with while well, you're working on that you keep those muscles active and you keep your your head active and you're outside being outdoors uh you know you said at first you know you thought i'm just going to stay in the house and never go out again for some people just that first time they go out with a rollator it's like whoa <laughs> I actually have something to do now. I can actually get out. And you were talking, Alex, about, you know, uh, if you have a carbon uh, rollator that's very, very light, well, then you don't have to throw it into the trunk of the car. You're just folding it, putting it in behind the driver's seat, and you're going out and you're doing your shopping and your, you know, groceries, and you don't need anyone's help. You don't have to ask your nephew to come and help you, and you don't have to ask, you know, the kids to help. 
Yeah, and you're being seen as well, you're, right? Yeah. You're, you're you're out there being seen. I think the problem too, and the thing that I notice in other places is that if you don't have if people don't have access to these um, aids and these tools uh, to give them autonomy, then they don't get seen, yeah. and then that's that's a problem because then if they don't get seen, then they don't get help, right? It's, it's, a, this it's a idea weird of weird like, cycle, you know. Oh, nobody wants access to this. You don't see the people coming, yes. right? You don't even know that yeah. there is this need there there's it is exciting to know yeah. that there are new and improved devices on the market that style is being prioritized as well as function and that we have more and more options when it comes to mobility aids yeah. thank you suzanne for your passion oh. in serving this community <laughs> you can find suzanne and her awesome mobility aids and adaptive sporting equipment at prairievelo.ca that's prairie v-e-l-o dot c-a i had a lot of support when i was first diagnosed but the transition to mobility aids can feel like a whole new diagnosis when you lived with ms for 10 15 20 years your friends and family might assume you have your disability shit together so if you're struggling don't be afraid to tell your people that you need a little extra TLC. Disability progression is a milestone that you might need to grieve. So give yourself permission to process what you're going through and know that you will adapt. Then hopefully, eventually, even embrace mobility aids as the tools they are and start living that Hashtag babes with mobility aids life. Mobility aids have definitely made our lives easier. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Keep moving, trippers. Thanks for listening to Tripping On Air. Don't forget to visit us at trippingonair.com.